What's going on, church? I am coming to you from beautiful Tampa Bay, Florida. That's right. Just soaking in the sun, visiting some friends, doing a wedding a little bit later. This is absolutely gorgeous. Why don't we start this off by saying our faith statements together? Join with me. I am deeply loved, highly favored, greatly blessed, totally righteous, and destined to reign because of Jesus. We've been walking through this uh, collection of talks titled Romans, and so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and pray, and then we're going to get going in Romans chapter 12 and learn some pretty amazing things together. Jesus, we want to say thank you first and foremost for this amazing day that you've blessed us with. I pray, Father God, that when we go through this day, we see opportunities to help other people cross the line of faith and follow you. I pray, Father God, that we continue to be a blessing to our families, to our neighborhoods, to our cities, to our state, to our nation, and to our world. In your name we pray, all God's people say together now, amen. Hey, how many Lego people that you played with the Legos as a kid? Let me see your hands. Yeah, there, I see you. Come on, put your hand up. I know it's still through video, but you can participate. I used to play with Legos as a kid and build all kinds of stuff, but here's what I discovered. As a father, I figured out that I'm not that great of a Lego creation builder. In fact, my poor kids, we would go into the Target uh, aisles and they would pick out this creation. And on the box, the creation looks amazing, right? Maybe it was a Star Wars creation. Maybe it was a dump truck. Maybe it was an airplane. But they would pick it out and on the box, the packaging, it actually looked really sweet. So the pressure is on as a father, you gotta go home and you have to build that so it looks like that creation, right? <laughs> well, my poor kids, <laughs> we would get done building it and they'd be like, dad, that looks nothing like the package. <laughs> I discovered that I'm really not that great as a Lego builder. Here's another thing I thought of when I was talking through this message and when I was praying through this message. Life takes building, doesn't it? Life takes some building. It takes some time to build things in our lives. And what I wanna to do today is I wanna give you four building blocks from Romans chapter 12 that Paul the Apostle talks about that are gonna help us in our everyday life. So let's start off with Romans chapter 12, uh, verses one. It says this, it says, and so dear friends and sisters, I plead, dear brothers and sisters, sorry, not friends and sisters, and dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a holy sacrifice, the kind that will be acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. And so the first building block that Paul the Apostle pulls out of Romans chapter 12 is this one right here. Building block number one, you and your family build, here it is, lives of worship. Lives of worship. Our entire lives, every minute of every day, are built to worship. Here's a few simple things to build lives of worship. Start simple. Weekly, every single week, take your body and your family's body to a place of worship. This is why I love this interaction right here. We are having right now an encounter with God by studying his word together. I love it when I see families actually bringing their kids, their husbands, their wives to church together. I love that. I love the fact that right now you are sitting with your family in church learning the word of God together. That is a simple way to start building a life of worship. Psalms chapter 92, 13, it says this, those who are planted in the house of God shall flourish in the courts of our God. Those who are planted. You see, every single week we have a planting that happens in the house of God. We're planted in the house of God. It's not just something that we consider. It's not an option. We actually plant ourselves in the house of God. We become part of the house of God so that we can flourish. It could be read like this. When I took that word flourish and I broke it down and I discovered the real meaning of the word flourish, it says this, you could read it like this. 
those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall grow and develop in a healthy or vigorous way, especially as a result of a particularly favorable environment in the courts of our God. You see, right now, we have a particularly favorable environment as we worship together. Right now, whether you feel it or not, whether you see it or not, whether you actually know it or not, you are flourishing. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm flourishing. I'm flourishing. See, a tree actually grows healthy when it's planted in the best possible soil. What makes a tree strong is the fact that its roots go deep into the ground. That's how a tree is planted and becomes strong. My question for you today, church, is this. How deep are your roots in the spirit of God? Because the more we get planted in who he is, the more we get planted in what he is saying, the more we get planted by being obedient to what he is asking us to do, the stronger our life becomes. If we're planted deep, we flourish. You know, another thing that a tree needs is a tree needs water to thrive. The same is true for you and I. Our soul needs water to thrive. Think about it. When we encounter the living God, we are encountering the water, the living water that comes only and through him. So we thrive as we spend time with our creator. Here's another thing that we can do to build lives of worship. Worship with your body every day, not just during the weekday. You see, Wednesday is a great moment because in my mind, I think Wednesday is the first day of the week. We are giving God the first right now. We are starting our lives together in worship, saying we worship you and declare the rest of this week worship to you. We're going to worship you on Thursday. We're going to worship you on Friday. We're going to worship you on Saturday. We're going to worship you on Sunday. We're going to worship you on Monday. We're going to worship you on Tuesday. Every single day, we're going to worship you. Why? Because it's important to maintain a healthy relationship with God daily. Don't let Wednesday be the only day that you actually set aside time to worship God. Let me ask you a few questions with that in mind. If I eat healthy one day a week, am I actually going to get healthy? No, not at all. That is stupid to even think. If I exercise one day a week, am I actually going to get in shape? No, not a chance. If I show up at my job once a week, Will the likelihood of being fired be there? <laughs> yes, absolutely, right? Some of you right now are thinking, well, Pastor, you only work one day a week, right? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> if I shower once a week, <laughs> how fresh will I be? <laughs> Some of you right now, you're thinking about, have I showered yet this week, right? <laughs> The bottom line is worship is the same way. If we just worship one day a week, we're not making progress. We're not actually becoming healthy in our relationship with God. It takes an every single day uh, opportunity with God to become healthy. Romans chapter 1, 12, 1, it says, So here's what I want you to do with God helping you. Take your every day, your ordinary diet day, you're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. So here's just the simple things that we can do to make sure that daily we are worshiping God. Before you eat, worship him. And we're Americans, man. We eat all the time, don't we? All the time. We eat breakfast, we eat mid-breakfast, we eat lunch, we eat mid-lunch, we eat supper, we eat mid-supper, and then we have an evening snack. Before we eat anything, before anything that goes into our mind, every, our mouth, every single day, take a moment and just worship God. It's just going to be a simple daily reminder to tie worship to eating. Here's another thing. As you exercise, maybe put on a sermon as you're exercising. Maybe put on one of your favorite faith-filled podcasts. Maybe put on some worship music. And as you exercise, just simply enjoy that time with God. It's just a simple thing every day that we're reminding ourselves this is a moment of worship because Paul the Apostle said, take your everyday ordinary life. Every, every day. Just the ordinary things that we do and dedicate them to God. Lay them before God as an offering saying, I worship you today. As you work, take moments to slow down, stop, receive. Remember that? Slow down, stop, receive. Slow down, stop, receive. Slow down, stop, receive, right? 
take a moment to slow down, stop and receive during your workday and look for the opportunity that God is giving you to worship him. Maybe it's by simply telling the person who works down the hallway from you about God. Maybe it's by simply taking a moment and just having a moment of silence. Maybe it's a moment to go and tell your boss how grateful you are that you have a job and that he employed you and that he might give you a raise. Everybody say amen, amen, right? Romans chapter 12, verse two, Paul the apostle goes on. Because now that we have that first foundation of building a block of worship, there's another thing that we do. Paul the apostle says, don't copy the behavior or the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. We say it all the time. We're going new in 2022. How are we going to do that? Well, we bust up the way that we think. We constantly evaluate how we are thinking. Think about it like this. How many of you, when you made Jesus the leader and the forgiver of your life, actually began to think different? I did too. Why? Because every day our thinking is being transformed into his thinking. All of a sudden, the way he thinks is the way that we desire to think. All the way, all of a sudden, the way that he thinks about the world and the day become our desire to think about the world and the day. We don't walk around with like a defeated mentality. No. Why? Because Jesus doesn't think that way. We look at the world and we say, today is going to be the best day of my life. I'm living the dream one day at a time. Heaven's my home. I'm just here recruiting, right? That's the way that we think. Paul the Apostle goes on, he says this, then you will learn to know God's will for you. God's got plans and purposes for you, which are good, pleasing, and perfect. The second building block that we can apply to our lives every single day to have a healthy family and a healthy faith is this. Welcome the ideas of Christ and not the world into your life because there are a lot of different ideas. We welcome the ideas of Christ. Letter A, we must reject the corrupt ideas of culture. Culture currently is extremely corrupt. It's trying to feed us lies that don't stand and build a good foundation for our life. So what we do is we reject that. We say no to that. We close the door on that. We don't allow those corrupt ideas into our home. It's okay to say no. Practice right now. One, two, three, no, exactly. Say no to the corrupt ideas. No to the corrupt things of culture. No to the things that you know are not going to help your life out on a day-to-day -day basis. Say no to those things. And then letter B, we must choose the good ideas of Christ. Well, what are the good ideas of Christ? Here's how you know there's a good idea of Christ. Christ's ideas are going to be true. First and foremost, all of Christ's ideas are true. They're going to be honest. They're going to be just. They're going to be pure. They're going to be lovely. They're going to be full of good reports. They're going to be praiseworthy. And so think on those things. Don't allow corruption to become your way of thinking. No, think about things that are true, that are honest, that are just, that are pure, that are lovely, that are full of good reports, and that are praiseworthy. Those are the things we allow into our home. Matthew chapter 4, 4 says it like this. People do not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So what I want you to do is I want you to consider, consider doing this. Join a daily Bible reading plan because the only way that we're going to know what's true, what's excellent, what's praiseworthy, what's good, what's pure, the only way we're going to know that is by knowing what the Bible says because everything in there is God's word to us and we live off that. When, in, when Jesus said man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, Jesus was already anticipating us studying scripture so that we know when corruption is trying to attack our home. So join a Bible reading plan this year. If you want one, I've got one for you. Just go ahead, message me, and I'll get it to you. Romans chapter 12, verses 3, three says this. Paul the Apostle says, Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Now he's sending out a warning. Paul the Apostle is sending out a warning. He's saying this, don't think you are better than you really are. Anybody ever been guilty of that? <laughs> yeah, this guy, right? <laughs> don't think you're better than you really are. Instead, be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith that God has given us. So building block number three, evaluate your life 
and your family through the lens of faith. How do we know if we're getting better daily in our faith? It takes some self-evaluation. And so listen, I went online and I was studying for this message and I came across this really super cool evaluation that this Catholic priest uh, leads his congregation is in every single year. And I thought this was just so good. I wanted to share it with you. Just remember, there's no guilt, there's no shame. This is just a simple snapshot to see how we're doing in our family and how we're doing in leading our family in faith. Just a snapshot, it's all it is. No guilt, no shame, just something that we can look at and say, maybe there are some areas that I can be better in and maybe there are some areas that I'm doing really, really well in, right? So I'm just gonna read these, read these through and you can mark a one uh, if it's not so good that you're doing or a five if you're doing great. One through five is the scale. One not so good, five uh, really good. Here's a few things. Number one, our family participates in weekly worship. How do you rate, right? Number two, adults and teens in our home read the Bible regularly. Again, one through five, how are we doing church? Number three, our family prays together daily before meals, before bedtime, when the kids leave for school and when there's other opportunities to pray together, maybe before sports or maybe before visiting family. How do you rate in between one and five? Number four, our family participates in the life of the church by sending students to student church if it's offered where you're at, right? Uh, or kids to kids church if it's offered where you're at. Uh, and other things throughout the week that we can get some more biblical foundation. Again, how do we rate? Number five, our family fosters an atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. We seek to make our place, uh, our home a place of care, a place of love, a place of faith, a, a place of understanding, a place of forgiveness among family members as scripture teaches. Again, how do we rate? Number six, our family regularly talks to others in our cities about faith of, in Christ and seeks to pray with and encourage others about Jesus. Number seven, our family values the word of God and uses it as a guide for our money, our personal relationships, and our sexual activity. Number eight, our family values the word of God and uses it for a, a guide system throughout every day as we think. Am I thinking according to the plans and purposes of God? Number nine, our family shows a special concern for the poor, the addicted, the broken, the disadvantaged, and the marginalized. Again, a scale of one to five, how are we doing? Uh, number 10, our family makes political and social choices based on our understanding of the word of God through faith. Number 11, our family loves the body of Christ and volunteers in some way at the church to make sure that every attender is experiencing the presence of God. And number 12, our family seeks to correct our children in a loving way that points them towards Christ. Just a scale of one to five for each and every single one of those questions. How are we doing? And then you can add up your total score. And if, you, if your score was in between 46 and 60, you and your family have and are moving towards a strong, healthy foundation of faith in your home. If it's between 23 and 45, there are some adjustments that need to be made and maybe a returning to Christ as your first priority. Think and pray through what changes the Holy Spirit is calling you to walk in and, and just consider what he has been speaking to you about. And if your score is in between zero and 22, life in your home is far from God. You may be a Christian, but your home and life is far from Jesus. Know this, that God loves you first and foremost. He wants you to return to him and worship him with your whole heart. And you and your family just need a major faith adjustment and pray and seek the Lord for what that looks like. Repent and simply just turn back to God and dedicate your family's day to him. Just a simple snapshot, no guilt, no shame, just a simple easy way to say, hey, how am I doing with my family and faith? How am I doing with fortifying my home? Romans 12, four through five lands the plane like this. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a specific function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. Building block number four is this, Get connected to your church family because every single one of you has a different gift, a different part of the body that's important, and without you, it doesn't function 100%. For example, if I didn't have fingers, my hand would lag. If I didn't have a hand, my arm would be lonely, right? All of the parts of the body build each other up to function as one body, and God has equipped you with everything you need to be part of the body. Listen, I'm excited for what God is doing in your life. Why don't we go ahead and close this with Psalms chapter 67, verses one and two. Let's say it together. God, be gracious to us and bless us. Make his face shine upon us that his way may be known on earth, his saving power among all nations. We'll talk to you next time.